And we will begin, as I said, with a question from the floor. The first question, which will promote a lot of discussion, comes from Jeff Knight. Where's Jeff? Here we go. Now all we need to do is get a microphone to you. <laughs> so keep your microphone down here because I think the other question comes from the front table as well. Now, question to the panel. On. Question to the panel, and this is the question that keeps me awake at night. I hope it might be you too. Uh, but I want to ask the panel what is their view on the pending closure of Holden, and after yesterday you might as well bracket Toyota in there as well. What's your view on the closure of Holden and its impact on the state of South Australia? Okay, let's start with Greg Combo. Uh, well, Jeff's the secretary of the chief executive of the department for which I'm now working. <laughs> You better not contradict him. <laughs> no, so uh, I think he's got a bit of an idea, but for kicking off the discussion, I mean, there's a lot of estimates around, but the fact of the matter is that the car industry is now dead. Um, with the three major motor vehicle manufacturers going, uh, there's no work for the suppliers in those supply chains, and there's a large challenge ahead for those businesses to diversify and survive. The fact of the matter is many of them will not survive, uh, some of them would be owned by international corporations that will simply shut up when production stops. Uh, it could be that we don't have to wait until 2016, 2017 for all of that to occur. There's a lot of risk within the supply chain. For example, if volumes fall, if you go by Ford's January sales, uh, that's a very worrying trend. There'll be cash flow difficulties to be experienced. And I want, I suppose, in answer to Jeff's question, to emphasise to people the scale of this, I consider it to be an economic catastrophe. And it'll be very significant for this state. There are tens of thousands of people whose livelihoods uh, are affected by it. Uh, they will need a lot of support. And of course, there are hundreds of businesses, uh, many of which, of course, family businesses, private companies, uh, which have made significant investments over a lot of years. And they're going to need a lot of support and guidance as well. And an occasion such as this when an industry comes to a dead stop uh, without going into the reasoning why uh, is a very significant one for us. Uh, in terms of the state domestic product, it's clearly going to be well in excess of a billion dollars per year and there's estimates of 13 or 15,000 people affected simply by the Holden closure. About, for those of you unaware, I think an, an estimate too that about 40% of the revenue in the supply chain in South Australia is derived from Toyota's operations as well. And so whilst following Holden, it was bad enough, uh, we're at least thinking there was a, a chance to leverage off some of the Toyota revenue, but that's now gone too. I know that's a pretty hard message, but that is the reality of it, and you've got to confront a reality before you can build a position to climb out of it. And uh, no doubt we'll discuss that a bit further. Sure, we will. And uh, I just want to ask you one quick follow-up question, though, because you mentioned uh, that it may not be uh, 2016 or 17 uh, that we're talking about in reality. We know that Ford is already talking about shifting forward their uh, plans to retrench workers in Victoria. Um, do you fear that volumes fall lower of sales, that is, um, this could happen much quicker than anyone's expecting because industries do need a little time to restructure. Well, they thought they had time. Well, I, I hope that at some point we'll get into a bit of a discussion about the economic philosophies underpinning this because um, time to restructure was in large part what the assistance for the automotive industry has been about. Um, now there's no time, and it is true. If, if sales of Ford's uh, continue to be as bad as they were in January. If Holden and Toyota sales decline rapidly uh, on the back of this bad news, uh, then those companies are going to be under considerable pressure and the timetable will be brought forward. But there is another risk that will need to be managed as well, and that is within the supply chains. There are key suppliers of componentry to the major motor vehicle manufacturers uh, that if those companies were to fail, even because of cash flow pressures and declining volumes, uh, then that could precipitate an earlier decision by the major manufacturers as well. 
Okay, let's hear from uh, Raymond. Uh, that's a pretty grim outlook, obviously, and uh, you can tell that those words have fallen um, like lead balloons in this room. Uh, but I did see someone tweet, I can't wait for some, uh, for some foresight rather than hindsight. So is there an, any bright, um, is there any light at the end of the tunnel uh, from your perspective? Uh, well, of course there is. And I keep being reminded of uh, the great, uh, you know, it's the best of times, it's the worst of times, and everything that Greg has said is true and reflects the worst of times, and I could make a speech for an hour and a half on the worst of times, and then we'd go all drink and probably jump in the River Torrens. But I think you can also make as compelling a speech about the best of times. I think the major issue is the one that Greg alluded to, which is around the time to restructure. Uh, I supported a series of processes that extended that time, and I was kind of hoping we'd have closer to eight to ten years to go through that restructuring process. Now we've probably got, as you said, two in the most four years. But we're not restructuring solely on a crisis. We have a lot of opportunity here. And I think this is a critical decade for this state, whether, you know, no matter what Holden did. And it's key that we build on our great strengths. And the greatest strength we have in this, uh, in this state is the diversity of our economy. Uh, we're not solely dependent on any one thing. Uh, manufacturing and the transformation of manufacturing is critical. We need to look at that, the potential we have in agriculture, uh, education. Uh, I believe we've got an enormous opportunity in this state to turn what is perceived as one of the great negatives, the age of our population, in fact, into a positive and be the state that uh, harvests the silver dollar by creating industries that can be taken across the world to service the need of seniors and so on and so forth. So uh, yes, it's difficult and we, we have to begin by addressing the realities of the individuals involved and particularly the communities involved which uh, in the northern suburbs in particular happen to be amongst our most depressed and most difficult to address anyway. While we also call upon all of us in this room to be the solutions. Uh, this is not going to be solved by government. Uh, it's going to be solved by everybody in this room and the thousands who are not, deciding that this is a place that we want to invest in, that we want to grow, and we want to transform. And I, for sure, don't want to be known as the member of the last uh, generation of the great state of South Australia before the Great Decline, or before that case study and lost opportunity is presented. Uh, I want to be known as someone who was part of the solution that transformed the state. And I think we've got a hell of a lot to work Let's with. Let's hear from all of them.